Greetings and welcome to another episode of the Owlings Podcast Project. My name is Martin Wilsey and I'm your host. I think it's been a while since we've introduced ourselves here again, so I'm going to make everybody go around the room once and uh, state their name and um, uh, what they're working on quickly. So uh, we'll start with David. All right. My name is David Keener. I write science fiction and fantasy. Uh, I'm currently working on polishing up my first novel, Clash by Night, which should be published soon, certainly by the time you actually see this podcast. And he's not really at the beach. <laughs> I am Jeffrey. at the beach, in my mind at least. Hello, I'm Jeffrey, sometimes known as Time Horse. And I'm working on this neat little novel called Time of the Kevins in the Project Chronosphere Universe which again should be published by the time you watch this, but then these deadlines, they keep whooshing by. But either way, I like to write uh, all kinds of eclectic stuff and I hope you'll enjoy our positions on the podcast. Okay. All right, and I'm Shay. I write under S.C. McGowey. And my first book was published in 2019 by St. Martin's Press. And I write, you know, YA, sci-fi, fantasy, everything but the kitchen sink. So uh, very happy to be on the podcast. Thanks for tuning in. Okay, so tonight we're going to be talking about the importance of the first line of a novel. And tonight, David's going to be driving the bus. So take it, David, take it away. Sure. So this is one of the topics we've been de debating about. It's like, you know, what makes a good first line? How important is it? Things like that. So I'm going to toss out the question. Um, why is a first line, a good first line, really important? Uh, and I'm going to toss it over to Jeffrey first. Oh, first lines. My goodness. There's the cover, there's the back blurb, and then the first line. Because most, uh, when you buy a book on Amazon or something, or in a bookstore, you open it up and you read maybe the first paragraph. And that first line is what hooks you. So I, I do like to make a good first line, uh, even with the short stories. It's important to have a good first line. For instance, I remember the stars. That is one of my favorite that I've written opening lines because it's so enigm enigmatic. Of what could that be? That why are there no stars? What happened to them? Uh, or in my current novel, right now it opens with a quote of just "merde," which is a French exclamation and. Although uh, I, I think Shay and I have talked a bit about whether you should start with an opening quote or uh, whether it's better to start literary. I kind of like that because it's a shocking quote. It's a getcha. And, and it just brings you in and makes you want to read more. I'm not sure that's it. Be, but that's okay. <laughs> well, fair enough. All right, Shay. Your question is, why is an opening line important? A good yeah. one? Yes. Uh, because attention spans are short because competition is plentiful and because uh, a catchy opening line shows that you understand your craft, that this is important, you put thought into it um, and it represents what the next chapter, the next paragraph is gonna be. So uh, that, that's my answer, short and sweet, I guess. What do you think, Marty? Well, I think first in lines are important because they are the equivalent of a first impression. Um, we have talked before on this podcast about how important it is to hook in readers, and this is one of the variables in that algorithm that helps hook them in. And having a good first line really gets a book off to a great start, and a good first line, you just, you just can't beat it. If you get somebody excited about your story in one sentence, you really have got something there, so... I, I, I really believe, you know, I spend more time on first lines than entire chapters. And it's almost, it, it's almost important enough that it's also the last thing. The entire rest of the book can be completely done and edited. And it's the last thing I really obsess over before press and publish. That's true. Um, so uh, I, it's they're, they're super important as far as I'm concerned. Uh, I'm, I'm somewhat, um, I believe in, a, I believe first lines are important. Um, I do think that it's one of the things that you can do after the, the, the cover and the blurb. Uh, when people start looking at that preview where they flip it open in the bookstore, you want to grab their attention. 
you want to make them read the first paragraph, the, the first sentence, the first paragraph, and go, you know, I want to keep reading. I'm going to have to buy this thing, right? Uh, I'm not necessarily sure sometimes that it has to be that that magical um, one sentence and you must simply buy it. I, I think that's something to aspire to, but I don't think you always reach it. But at least at least give me something to be interesting, interested in um, so that I read further and, and then maybe want to actually buy your, your book. And my example of a good first line, it was a pleasure to burn. Ray Bradbury from Fahrenheit 451. <laughs> All right. So let's talk about first lines a little bit deeper. Like what, what makes a good first line? I'll toss this over to Marty. Well, I think that there is a lot of uh, um, genre dependencies associated with first lines. Um, and when I was getting ready for, uh, um, for this episode, you know, I just wandered m through my library and um, picked off the shelf a couple of things. Romance first lines are uh, a lot different than science fiction or action adventure. Um, uh, mystery first lines are dramatically different than um, um, other genres because with mysteries, you want to like, you know, light the fuse under or underneath the um, bench on the train so that when they're talking about baseball for two hours, the, you know, the tension builds. But um, so uh, uh, I am rambling aimlessly. What was the question? <laughs> <laughs> what, what makes a good first line? What is there uh, about a good first line is something that one is, you know, it it can tell you what the genre is and helps you launch into the genre. And uh, I like good first lines that um, accomplish something just in the first line. Accomplish something about one of the characters, one of the settings, or... Uh, a component in plot. I think that um, a really great first line accomplishes um, those kind of things. All right, uh, Jeffrey. Well, and you should while I'm taking a drink, but <laughs> uh, I, I, no problem. I I will say that uh, one of the things that I get out of that first line is just what is this about, and what are what are we getting into. Um, one of my favorites of, of the literary genre, uh, i.e. ones that I have written, even though I believe my book is literature, uh, is uh, In a Hole There Lived a Hobbit. Famous first line of uh, The Hobbit. It actually goes, in a hole, in a ground, there lived a hobbit. Thank you for the correction, my friend. That's right. It's one of my uh, favorite books, too. It's, it's yes, a good first line. It's on my list, too, actually. Yeah, it's a great line because it sets up that mystery what is a hobbit what's it doing in that hole in the ground and and, and what's going to come of it uh i remember the stars again what's going to come of it what does that mean where am i going with this i think that's the great thing that, that that's what makes the first line great is when it sets up a question that you want to have solved it's just like the end of your chapters it is the the hook that brings you in i want to read more Okay, so more than the hook, it's a, it's a story question that wants you to, f to read further to find the answer. Right. Okay, fair enough. Uh, Shay? Uh, I think I I irony makes a good first line. Um, combining two things that you, you wouldn't normally combine, such as in your example, David, it was a pleasure to burn. That's a good example of irony. And so that alone is intriguing. You want to continue to see, you know, what was behind that irony? What is the context? Where is that going? Um, and another good component for, for, for a first line would be urgency, sort of uh, hearkening to what you were saying, Marty, accomplishing something. Um, urgency in the sense that it has the tone about it where the author gets right to it and doesn't want to do away. Um, that's a good first line as well. One example might be uh, Charles Dickens, A Christmas Carol. His opening line was, Mari was dead to begin with. There is no doubt whatever about that. First two sentences, actually. So, you know, it, it has a very, it has a very chipper, urgent feel to it. So I, I, if I had to boil down my two words, it would be I would search for irony and urgency when you were crafting your first line. Okay. 
Uh, and for me, uh, things that make a good first line, it may vary from genre to genre or from story to story, but it's, it's gotta be something that grabs my attention. Um, it could be, uh, it could give me a sense of the character uh, and oh boy, I wanna follow this guy. Or it could give me a, a sense of urgency or what's really interesting with some of these first lines is they're almost like a masterclass in writing. It's like, how can you write something really tight that accomplishes a whole bunch of things, but all you have is maybe 20 words at most in order to do it. Um, one of my favorites is from a mystery writer called, uh, uh, well, the mystery writer's name is uh, Donald Westlake. He wrote uh, uh, an action series uh, uh, called uh, the Parker series under the pseudonym Richard Stark. And I know these guys have heard this quote before, but I love it. When the car stopped rolling, Parker pushed out the window and came out onto the crumpled hood block first, right? You are in the middle of the action. You know that Parker is a tough guy. You know he's not phased by anything. And you know that there is people after him. You are in the middle of the action and you got to read, read further to find out what's going to happen. I think you bring a, a great point up there. Uh, to me, that's a great point. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. You froze and I thought you stopped talking. No, no I was done. <laughs> uh, you bring up a great point too, because I think it's going to be very hard to craft a great first line if you're not starting your story in the right place, if you're not starting late enough into the scene. Yeah, that was the thing with my uh, uh, first novel. Um, I had read in uh, Stephen King's book, he, he made the recommendation, if you're a beginning author, just go right now, just go ahead and delete your first three chapters. And boy, was that right. <laughs> yep. Because I was definitely starting it in the wrong spot. Now, I don't think I was as bad with that because um, I was an outliner from the beginner, from the beginning. And, and also I, um, I tended to, to study a lot of the screenplay stuff, which is a lot more um, uh, relentless, I guess, about structure. So, I'm the um, I'm the editor for the anthology in one of our one of my writing groups, and I have earned myself a wicked reputation that no first paragraph survives my hands um, of every submission. So everyone just exactly what Marty said; they just go right ahead and cut it before they even send it to me at this point. Okay. Uh, let's see. I think I've covered everybody there. Okay. Here's a, here's a good one. Rate yourself on writing uh, opening sentences, first lines. You think you're good, you think you're mediocre, you think you've got a lot to learn? I think I'm pretty good. I mean, I'll be arrogant. <laughs> I'll, I'll start us off with a, with a pinch of arrogance and then we'll get more humble as we go. Um, I, I've always been pretty good at starting with action, but I've gotten better at adding irony uh, to my, my opening lines as well. Um, so, one thing that I would add to my list of urgency and irony is also a touch of deception never hurts uh, in your first uh, in your first uh, line. The the one my traditionally published novel with Macmillan starts with I liked being ridden and offered the chance to pretty much every guy in video two, which of course made some eyeballs pop out of their heads when they opened it. And then later the reader realized that the character is talking about a wheelchair, that you know, she liked uh, having guys ride her wheelchair. So I thought that was a pretty good opening line and it, it took a risk. So maybe take risks when you do your opening line. Okay. Uh, Jeffrey? Yeah, I mean, uh, I, I think I'm okay. I mean, I do like that line that I gave. I think mailed is fun for me, but maybe others will say it. What a stupid opening line. But I mean, I can't remember uh, the twin dilemma when I started that. Since some of my opening lines are not even memorable, like the Arctanthropist, I will say that maybe I'm not that good. But I also am someone who does the short fiction. I write 13 uh, word stories where you have to be tight and it has to be not just the first line, opening line, it is the only line. Um, and so in that sense, because I've had a lot of practice doing that, I probably do have some skill in crafting a sentence that conveys a lot, yet leaves questions for more. All right, Marty. 
Yeah, I would I would categorize myself as medium. You know, I get lucky now and then. Mm -hmm. um, I've had a couple of really great first lines um, and, and some average ones. I, I've i learned a lot. Uh, my most recent first lines are improving and um, uh, better. Um, and uh, and I, I enjoy doing them. And the thing is, is I got, if I enjoy the first line, the likelihood that a reader might enjoy it um, uh, is uh, higher. Um, I have open here on a, I have bookmark um, the opening line for the book I wrote, The One Stand. It's a, a novella. Um, this is the first, the first line in that book. When all was quiet, Thorne realized the blood dripping from his chin wasn't his. <laughs> yes, I remember that. I was the editor for that. Story. Yep, yep. And uh, I really like that as, a, as an opening line. So um, this being one, one of the more recent stories I've written, I think I've gotten better over the years. Um, so uh, that, an that answers it. I'm definitely in the middle. I, I see room for improvement and I'm constantly uh, trying to improve. And um, well, with hope, you know, maybe my next novel will have a really awesome first line. We'll see. Yeah, I, I think I'm strictly in the middle too. And in fact, uh, maybe even a little less in the middle if I'm being honest. Um, I tend to be, I tend to write detail oriented stories. So for instance, my first paragraph will give you a pretty decent sense of the type of story, but I'm not sure that it's quite the kind of first line or, or that it has kind of the first line that really reaches out and grabs you by the throat and says, buy me now. So for me, I think that's probably a skill I need to work on some more. Uh, that's, my, that's my own self-rating. Okay, so what makes a bad first line, Marty? Well, I think a bad first line is you can't, you can't start out with a metric ton of exposition. You can't start out with an info dump. You know, you can't start out, you know, uh, first the earth cooled and then all the dinosaurs died and turned to oil. And then, uh, you know, there was wars in the Middle East. You can't do that and, and start a book off boring to the, get somebody to slog through it. You just can't do that. Um, another bad first line is, um, like a character wakes up and looks in the mirror. It's like, <laughs> please, you know, uh, don't, don't do cliches. Don't, um, um, uh, and, and don't confuse the reader. You can't get too far into a story without them knowing something. You have to paint some some picture somewhere. Start start giving them fidelity as early as possible. Okay, Jeffrey. Bad. Yeah, I, I think uh, Marty. Those are some of the things I think about too. Run on sentences. I mean, sentences that take a half a paragraph. No, no one has patience to read that and remember what the opening clause was. Is it a he or a she? I don't remember. That was way up there 29 year, words ago. I mean, uh, keep it tight, keep it concise, and make sure it, uh, you know, sets up uh, something that someone wants to read more of. And if no typos. Just, oh, and typos. The, oh my the, gosh. The, the yes. certainty that I will not buy a book is if I see a typo in the first line. Right, which is the importance of a good Not editor. only will I not buy the book, I will mock your book to my friends. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. That. I came across uh, complaining that his books weren't selling. So I went out and looked at his most recent book, which he thought was great. And I looked at the preview. And in the first sentence of the first paragraph of the book, there was a typo. And I'm just like face palm to the forehead. It's like, dude. Absolutely. Oh my goodness. It's yeah. like holding the crucifix up to a vampire. Just don't, yeah. you know, it's bad. Yeah, or or using you you have some limit you have some liberty for using weird words. But if your open line is just so chock full of weird words that it makes it intangible, that is not good. 
A little bit of weird, okay. Total weird, turn off. Yeah, I've seen that done too. All right, Shay, bad first lines. Uh, excessive length, weather, floating dialogue, and uh, a foreign language that is not your target audience's language. So those are ingredients for a poor first line. Thank you, Jeffrey. Nailed it. <laughs> it goes in for the kill. Yeah, right. I know. All right, for, for me, um, I, I'm an editor. I've done a, a number of anthologies at this point. I, I swear sometimes I can tell from the first paragraph whether the story is going to be worthwhile. Now, that's not always true. Sometimes I'm wrong, but, um, and it's partly the first, it's partly the, you know, conveying something interesting about the story in, in the first paragraph. Um, so I, I've seen things that, uh, you know, it was the greatest story ever told doesn't grab me. Um, I've seen things like, um, God, I'm trying to think of examples that I can provide without, uh, without nailing specific writers. Uh, <laughs> um, it's a detective story and you're about a warrior queen. And I'm like, well, where's, where's the detective part of the story? You're not even launching me into the, 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 the proper atmosphere for the story. Um, I think there's lots of ways to go wrong with the, the first sentence. Uh, I've also seen dialogue, and I think Shay, you mentioned this dialogue, that you can never figure out who, who said it. It's unattributed. Odin dialogue. Who said it? I'm confused. First line, I'm, I'm confused. Uh, something you don't want to do to your All right. Um, going to go around. Uh, I, I assume everybody else probably has at least one more example of a good first line. So, Shay, I'll let you start. No, end with me. <laughs> Want me to end with you? All right. Yeah. Jeffrey? Oh, well, I was going to do this one, which I think is the right uh, beginning of it. Uh, Tyler gets me a job as a waiter. After that, Tyler's punch pushing a gun in my mouth and saying the first step to eternal life is you have to die. Fight Club, I mean, that, that really grabs you. That really pulls you in. It really makes you say, what the heck? And, and I think that was a great opening line. Okay, Marty? Well, I'll, I pick one of, my, one of my other favorite lines from books I wrote. I, this is one I'm... Uh, very lucky to have uh, um, read Stephen King so that this was actually the beginning of chapter four <laughs> it, it, that um, ended up all the rest the it starts out as the action now so that it's uh, uh, page one uh, it's already happening so this is uh, uh, from my book Still Falling my very first novel in the very first line of my very first novel, Farkas crashed back into consciousness when his face smashed into the inside of his helmet. <laughs> so right now you've already you already know the shit's hit the fan somewhere, and uh, uh, he goes on to say he coughed and he could feel the blood spray into his helmet. Great, he probably broke his nose again. So it was a lot of fun to write. And the thing is, is that um, what made it better was the fact that, you know, I originally had the story start way the hell earlier the day before um, all of the events here. And, you know, he wakes up and he, he checks his calendar and, you know, he gets ready for work. And, you know, it was really boring, you know, and... Uh, um, I'm glad I, I did not did not do that. That's writing advice from actually one of my favorite writers. Exactly. <laughs> the Kinginator. Nice. Uh, El Elmore Leonard said basically uh, he liked to write uh, stories where he left the boring parts out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he was tight. Exactly. Exactly. He was quintessential type. Um, so for me, uh, let's see. 
uh, a good first line. Uh, I love this. You can probably uh, you can probably figure out the the book. All children, except one, grow up. Anybody? Peter Pan. Yep. Oh, very very creative. Yep. Mm -hmm. Peter Pan uh, was at uh, J M Barry. Oh. If that doesn't sum up the book, I'm not quite sure what does. Um, and that's an interesting challenge. Oh. To the first line to not only set up your story, but also kind of summarize the whole thing as well. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. All right, back to me. So I, I just quickly opened up a few of my manuscripts to see if I could find a trend in my style of opening lines. And as I suspected, they're very short and they're very action oriented. So I'll just read two. Uh, which are both under 15 words. One is 10 words, one is 12 words. And the first one is from a sci-fi. And it says, the vehicle jumps and knocks my hand off the wheel. That's it. And the other one is from a steampunk and says, a camera flashed in my face and I winced, lifting a hand. So I, I like both those. They're very simple. They're very short. But I think they both have a sense of place. Um, and they both have a lot of action. They, they bring you into the scene. Uh, so I'll just, this is my episode to be arrogant, I guess. Just, I'm just going to top my own books in this one. Oh, okay. But sure. yeah, so that, like I said, 10 words and 12 words. Very, very short. Mm. All right. Makes sense. Uh, I'm afraid I didn't really look at my books uh, to see if I had any great first lines. I'm, I don't really think of myself as a great first line writer right now. So, um, but anyway, I'm going to toss this out to you guys. Uh, any, any other comments about first lines? Well, I mean, I'll say this, the mystery, the fun of it, the whimsy of it. I mean, here's one that uh, also is pretty fun and common, uh, is the uh, far out in the uncharted backwaters of the unfashionable end of the western spiral arm of, of the galaxy lies a small, uh, unregarded yellow sun. It's like that that's sets you, yeah, exactly, sets you on an amazing adventure that makes you not panic. One, one last uh, comment that I'd like to make about first lines. I know some authors who are crippled by the first line. Mm. Don't be crippled. You know, first no first going chapter. in, you're just going to first draft everything. But when you're all done and you're polishing your book up as well as you can, revisit your first line last. That's great advice. Because then you'll know what the book's about. I, I will say that was a problem that I had when I was in my 20s. You know, I, I'd be writing and I'd be like, well, I can't write the second paragraph until the first one's per perfect. Right. Mm. I was definitely in that. It's got to be perfect before I can move on and stuff. Yeah. And uh, as, I got, as I got older and I developed writing techniques from other uh, venues like work, um, I, I got out of that mode. Yeah, Marty's uh, totally correct. That's a that's one way to cripple yourself. And my closing thought uh, is similar. I had a tendency with a couple of my short stories or novels or whatever, where I, I would just repeat the first line over and over in my head again and again because I was trying to get it right. And then once I finally settled on something, it just became a mantra. I could you know memorize it, and I got so attached to that to the way I wrote it that uh, I was very unreceptive to any comments from editors that said, well, this, this needs to be a little clearer or this word maybe needs to be changed or whatever. And so I, I dug myself into a hole that way. So we can get to a point where we're working so hard on our first line that when we finally think we got it right, we're very stubborn about it. Uh, so just be a little flexible about it. And if it's, I mean, I, I still remember one first line from a novel that got changed and I can't remember the way it was changed. I remember the original way I had it. <laughs> so it's, it's possible, but just be a little flexible on it because you will get feedback. You'll get plenty of feedback on your first line. Be flexible, great advice. And remember, you can always come back and, and edit the first line. Yep. It's mm -hmm. really easier to do that once the book is written than it is to try Absolutely. to get it. Absolutely. Yeah, it's true. All right, I think that's just about it, Marty, if you want to. Okay. End. Thanks. Another good episode. Another and, finally uh, structured one. We will uh, see you all next week. Thanks for stopping in. <laughs>